No, yesterday oh. was a long day actually in Wolverhampton, so uh, yeah. yeah, it was really All quite right, that's, that, that seems, that quite Now then, some may say that this is well prepared. However, we had our first meeting for this just two days ago. So it's all ad, ad hoc, it's all off the cuff, and it should be good fun. Martin has been bonkers, as normal, and uh, still some of us don't really know exactly what we've got to do. But, you know, it'll be fun, and um, we'll communicate about science, and we'll have a blast. <laughs> and that, uh, so the, and because it squeaks, the students think it's very funny. And, um, but in fact, the guy who sells these things saw my video using this on YouTube and sent me a whole box of them. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, and um, welcome to Nottingham as City of Science, if you're not from Nottingham, and also welcome to the Broadway cinema. I'm a um, very regular customer here, and I'm told, though I'm not quite sure if it's true, that the staff here call me the man with the hair. But I'm not certain, I haven't been able to prove this, this so because it's to protect me from the elements. But the, um, but the <coughs> point of this is that there is this chart which nearly every chemist has in their office or hanging on the wall at home or whatever. Some of them wear them even on T-shirts. And <coughs> about um, nine months ago, eight or nine months ago, I and my colleagues here began um, collaborating with Brady Harron, who's filming over there, video journalist, to try and make a YouTube video about each one of these elements. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it goes well, but for anyone who's seen the videos, they probably know that I like it when things don't always go quite that well, when things go a bit pear shaped so I hope it goes well, guys, but I hope a couple of things go wrong as well, because that always looks fun on the videos. Thanks very much. Okay, ready? Hold tight. Okay, so what we've got is we've got our excited state. Um, and chemists like to look into um, the rates of reactions um, and sort of slow them down and make them speed up and things. So that's our control. And I'm hoping that this reaction will slow down so much, hopefully, that it will stop blowing. So atoms aren't like, aren't like us when it gets all hot. We kind of you know, sit back, drink some cold drinks, slow everything down. Whereas when atoms get hotter, they zip around and, do, and react much, much faster. Those of you that know me don't like from Wales, and these are Welsh colours. This is fantastic. <laughs> and we've got our gases. Now, these gases are at room temperature at the moment. As Debbie said, they've got energies, they're whizzing around, and they're filling up these balloons. We'll test. We differentiate between these two really lively acids. So, can we have the lights off, please? So here we have my, my match on the stick, which is a bit like bronze seal, it does exactly what it says on the tin. So let's see what happens if we pop this balloon. Oh, pretty disappointed. It blew out the match though. So I guess that's not flammable. Do you think that's hydrogen or helium? Helium. Helium, okay. Let's try the other one. And my guess is it's not like hydrogen. <laughs> now interestingly, some people really need a green balloon. Now, red's normally the colour we store hydrogen in, so they did this to fox me, didn't they? So let's see what happens when we add a match on a stick to hydrogen. <laughs> so, I just demonstrate that there really are um, <coughs> perfectly ordinary roses. You can do she loves me, she loves me not, and so on. You can see they're perfectly ordinary roses. And um, if we now put them in the liquid nitrogen, because of course they're at room temperature, they will um, start causing the nitrogen to boil, and you can see the, the white colour you can see isn't actually the nitrogen, it's the water in the air that's frozen because it's cold. And we leave them for a moment just to cook, and then you see if we take them out, you can see the rose has bloomed, it's got bigger. And you can then say, she loves me, she loves it not. And you can completely 
scrunch it up. It's great, you see, you make a real mess. So what I'm going to do now is show you one of the um, lovely properties of carbon dioxide and how carbon dioxide goes from being solid straight to gas and with no liquid stage in between. What happens there? And what I'm doing here is not only demonstrating the wonder that is carbon dioxide, I'm also showing you what happens when you can't predict quite when something's going to happen. So who knows what will happen with these, how long it will take for them to do their thing. So I can just stand here in complete silence. Or I could just waffle on. I think I'll be the silence. <laughs> What we have here is um, a custom made cannon made by our workshop. <coughs> so, what we'll do is chuck in a good couple of handfuls. Do note, I am wearing gloves because this stuff is jolly cold. So, let's bring in plenty, chuck that pork bung in there, and again, who knows what will happen? There might be a leak, it might be nothing happens at all. Oh, oh you might get that! Chance of dinner! What I'm going to do is to take a bit of this solution and squirt it. This is just a plastic dropper, and I'm going to squirt it on here with the light. And can you see that when it goes on here, it is giving really quite nice fluorescence. Can you all see that? And let me just put the top on the pyridine before the smell gets to you. And the other thing is with this, and it's quite fun, this was discovered by a German professor about 40 years ago called Schmidt. He discovered he poured liquid nitrogen on it. It then changed colour as you cooled it down. And the reason for this is that the pyridine, when it goes on here, reacts with the copper. Yeah. It was a wonderfully quick reaction. So what it's showing you there is not only are you getting the typical Hollywood effect of the... Uh, if Martin, you should really be holding this. Um, <laughs> the typical Hollywood effect of the mad scientist with ocean slash weird chemical in random glassware for yeah. no reason. Um, you, you, you see, it has a reason that I'm holding this. It's because people are worrying about increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And if there's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, more carbon dioxide will dissolve in the sea. And so the sea will become more acid. And many sea creatures, corals, all, sorts, all the sorts of creatures that have shells, crabs, lobsters, and so on, they all have um, shells that contain calcium carbonate, which dissolves in acid. So if the sea becomes more acid, then many of these things will begin to dissolve. So it has really quite a serious implication. It's getting quite cold. So, Thank you. Fine. So, yeah. Most important thing about a live lecture is that, don't worry, still won't work probably. No, just leave it. The, <laughs> you see, one of, the, one of the great things about a lecture is that you're worried or you think perhaps it'll go wrong, perhaps it won't work. For 25 years, every year, I demonstrated the same experiment to the undergraduates knowing it wouldn't work. But they all thought it was going to work and thought I was looking silly because it didn't. And every year, they roared with laughter when I said it didn't work. Some proper bucket chemistry just weighing. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Dioxide is some hot water. The reaction there produces all this smoke, and the smoke actually is the carbon dioxide um, in, in gaseous form. Um, but what you can do with this is, as you can see there, um, actually it looks almost like a magic trick, really. 